Welcome back to Face the Nation. We want to go now to Wesley Lowry, CBS News correspondent for 60 and 6, which is a new digital program featuring 60 minute style storytelling in just six minute episodes on the streaming service Quibi. He was formerly at the Washington Post as the lead reporter covering police shootings and the Black Lives Matter movement. And as we mentioned earlier, he won the Pulitzer for his work. So Wes, it, you are formidable and we are glad to have you. Happy, I, you know, not happy to be here. I honestly, yeah. as none of us would like to be talking about uh, this again, obviously. Right? I, th I think the country would agree with you right now, but um, I, I know you've been on the phone and speaking with some of the activists who are in the streets and cities around the country. Uh, what are they telling you? You know, we're in this moment right now where all of us are asking, uh, of, every, of any political stripe, and even those of us who are not you know, explicitly partisan or political in any way, are asking how do we stop what's happening in the streets. No one wants to live in a world where the streets are burning, and no one wants to live in a world where people are killed in the streets, right? Mm -hmm. And what the activists are saying is, you all haven't been listening to us, right? For, you listen to the protest chants, right? One, one that's very popular uh, during these demonstrations, not just the George Floyd ones, but historically. Indict, convict, send the killer cop to jail, the whole system is guilty as hell, right? And what the activists are saying is, we have been saying the system is foundationally and fundamentally broken, and you've been giving us speeches in a, in a body camera. <laughs> you've been charging one individual officer, who then, by the way, very, might beat the charges. Mm -hmm. Or you've been firing an individual officer, and I've done reporting to suggest that many officers who get fired get their jobs back. There's actually a belief that many of these officers in Minneapolis may get their jobs back who were fired, right? So. The, again, what the activists are saying is that you all have not been listening to us, that that this was in so many ways inevitable, right? Again, the protest chant, right? If we don't get no justice, there will be no peace. But is there something, I wonder, that's very specific to this moment? Because as you've said, um, this is not the first case. This is one of, of innumerable uh, instances of police brutality that our country has talked about in the past few decades. What exploded it now? Is there something about uh, where we've been as a country with the economic crisis, with the pandemic? Why? I think all of those things are obvious, extremely short-term factors. Certainly isn't helpful that a bunch of people, and by the way, black Americans, those who are storming the streets, although certainly racially diverse groups, black Americans who started this, who were more likely to get sick and die because of COVID, mm -hmm. right? So the, the demographic group most likely to have spent two months without human contact in fear of their lives, right? That certainly factors in. The demographic group, the data tells us that was among the most likely to lose their businesses and their jobs because of the economic downturn. But we also can't attribute it just to the short term. Let's think about the medium term, the era we are in. That every time we open our phones or our computers, we being all of us, we watch another video like this, right? We, it's, and, and for years, it's been these pleas from elected officials, from policing officials, from the media, from everyone. Well, if you guys just calm down, I promise we'll, we'll fix it. We promise we'll fix it. We'll have a meeting. We'll have a town hall. Someone will give a speech. And at some point, you know, one of the examples I've heard people have said to me, and so now I've started saying it to talk about where the activists are, Lucy can only pull the football so many times before Charlie Brown punches her in the face. Uh, um, quite the analogy. The, one of the things I want to ask you about, because you are in touch with those on the ground, is... Uh, what the Justice Department, what the White House has said, which is that the protests, which you are laying out as peaceful and well-intentioned, have been infiltrated by far left-wing, specifically, radical groups. Antifa was mentioned by the National Security Advisor. Um, what truth is there to this? You know, every demonstration I've ever covered, any time I've ever been in the streets and interviewed people, um, and that's not untrue of these, but it's not exclusive to these. Everyone, Ferguson, Baltimore, Cleveland, Milwaukee, the list goes forever. Um, in all of those cases, there's a mixture of people in the streets, right? There, there are people who show up because they want to march, they want to yell, right? But those people never have control of everyone who shows up. There is always a mixture of folks. Um, and, and again, not just white anarchist groups or white Antifa, Black people who throw, you know, a, a brick at a cop or, you know, do the right thing, a trash can through a pizza shop window, right? That the reality is 
if you were to look at the mixture of people in the streets in American cities, the answer is probably all of the above. I think sometimes we get too focused on this. Well, is it one specific group that's trying to, again, uh, the reporting will start to look at what exactly is there, but I've never, I've never once been in the streets during one of these protests where the reporting has bo bared out that it was one specific group pushing, you know, in some deliberate way pushing all of this. The reality is it's always a confluence of people, a confluence of anger and frustration, and it can be too easy for us to think it's just some outside agitator who, when you, re when you read the after action reports and the, and the contemporaneous coverage of basically every riot that's ever happened in the last hundred years. Right. The local elected officials always say it's the outside agitators, it's not the people from here. We've seen in the last 48 hours, the officials in Minnesota claim that and the independent reporting proved that the vast majority of people arrested were local. Well, the, the attorney general said this morning, for, for the state, that is, uh, was yeah. saying that there is a lot of suspicious behavior, cars without Certainly. license plates, things that appear to be um, designed to cover up the identity of the individuals involved. Certainly, right? But uh, is that license plate from, is that car without a license plate from a state over or from a, from a city over, mm -hmm. right? You know, the, like the reality, the suggestion that people locally may not be upset, may not be frustrated enough to take such action, I guess it sometimes I think misses it. It's, un, it's unquestionable, right, that there are, that in all these protests, and again, it's from reporting, from being there on the ground, from talking to folks, it's unquestionable that there are people who show up explicitly to create yeah. chaos. No question. But so some of the elected officials we've been talking to at the local level say, you know, protests are good when they're organized. That's what the Atlanta mayor said. But basically, go express yourself at the ballot box. She told people to go home when she saw the violence on Friday. And then we just spoke to, to the mayor of, of St. Paul, uh, who was saying there is a real conversation that needs to be had, but that's about reforming a system. Correct. So what exactly needs to be reformed? And when do the protests stop? What the activist would say is literally everything, right? <laughs> what, what, what the activists would say is that American policing, as we currently understand it, as we've currently conceptualized it, is a legacy of slavery. It was created to um, control and, and in many ways abuse black Americans to keep them uh, subservient to a white majority. What the activists would argue is that a system that was constructed that way will never be able to provide equitable positions. And so again, so reforming- So being able to fire cops more easily as the mayor was talking about, things like that, you, you say even if that's done, not enough. I, it, it's very hard to see how that, how uh, piecemeal reforms like that would, uh, so if, if there is a structural and systemic issue, can you solve a structural and systemic issue with Band-Aids? And the, again, the data all suggests there is a structural and systemic issue. And the types of reforms we've talked about are individual reforms, firing an individual officer who does an individually bad thing, right? If there's actually a structural problem, that doesn't fix it. All right, Wesley Lowry, thank you very much. Thank you. For your reporting and your analysis.